Thyroid hormone is perhaps the best medicine to treat depression because of how well it works and how little side effects it causes. In this video, I'm gonna go over the must know things about thyroid hormone before considering it to treat major depressive disorder. The thyroid hormone we're talking about specifically is also known as T3 or Cytomel, which is the brand name, or Leothyronine. They're all the same thing. Let's start off with who can't take T3. Well, if you have heart disease, if you get chest pain, if you have high blood pressure, if you have thyroid toxicosis, which is where your thyroid hormone is already way too high, then we wouldn't want to treat with thyroid hormone. Or if you have an allergy to T3, leothyronine. So how does T3 actually work? Well, the exact mechanism of how it works is not really known, but it's thought to boost monoamines. Monoamines are things like serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. And did you know that actually five to 10% of people with depression have low thyroid. So if you do have depression, if you're having a depressive episode, it's important to get lab work. But an interesting note is that even if you have completely normal thyroid levels when they're checked on lab work, you may still benefit from treating with T3 if you're having depression. Well, how well does T3 work? Well, it's not actually FDA approved for any psychiatric reason, but we do know that it converts about 50% of people who are not responding to antidepressants. Let's say you start Zoloft, which is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, an SSR and you're not responding to that medication, if we start T3, there's a 50% likelihood that it'll change you to a responder, meaning your depression symptoms will get better. Next, let's take a bit of a deeper dive into how well T3 works, and let's look at a few studies. The first one is a study in 1999 by Aronson and colleagues. They did a meta-analysis, which is where you look at lots of studies, group them together. It looked at eight studies, 292 people with tri treatment-resistant depression on tricyclic antidepressants, TCAs. Treatment-resistant depression means you have not responded to at least two prior antidepressants. And tricyclic antidepressants are certain medicines that work on both serotonin and norepinephrine, and they're a bit of older medications. They cause a bit more side effects. What they found was an odds ratio, OR, of two. That means you're twice as likely to respond to the treatment, which was adding T3 to a tricyclic antidepressant versus not doing that. And that means you have 100% increased likelihood of response. And response in studies usually means that depression symptoms decrease by at least 50%. The effect size that was found was 0.62, which is a moderate effect size, which is actually really good in psychiatry. First line antidepressant treatments like selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, like Prozac, Zoloft, Lexapro, they have about a 0.3 effect size, which is a small effect size. 0.3 is small, 0.5 is moderate, and, and 0.8 and above is a large effect size. But of course, there were some limitations. Some of these studies were not placebo controlled, meaning they didn't compare T3 to something that doesn't work, a placebo, like a water or a sugar pill. And also some of these studies were structured a lot differently. That's what heterogeneity means. Meaning some studies might've been really small with only like 10 people, and other studies might've been a lot bigger with like 80. When they did look in this study specifically only at the four randomized controlled trials, the results weren't statistically significant. But the researchers did say this was mainly due to one of the studies, whereas the other three all did show significant results. The next study we're going to cover is the 2006 study by Russian colleagues. This was called the STAR-D study, and it was one of the biggest public studies that was done in how to treat major depressive disorder. It was open label, meaning everyone knew the medication they were getting, and there were four different steps. It included over 4,000 people ages 18 to 75 years old. T3 in this study was used as the, as the step three treatment for treatment resistant people. So if they're on step three, that means they've already failed two other antidepressants, and that means they meet the criteria for treatment-resistant depression. This step three meant you could either switch from what you were taking to either mirtazapine, which is an antidepressant, or nortriptyline, which is a tricyclic antidepressant, or you could keep what you were taking, let's say you were taking Zoloft, and you could augment it with either T3 or lithium, meaning you could add it on top. 
what they found for T3 augmentation was remission happened in 24.7% of people. That means remission means the symptoms go away almost completely. And response, meaning the symptoms decrease by at least 50%, happened in almost the same, 23.3%. Next, let's go over dosing. We start at 25 micrograms every morning on an empty stomach. This helps increase absorption. And we increase to 50 micrograms after two to four weeks if needed. T3 starts working in about two to four weeks, like most antidepressants, but you should give it a bit of time to work. You should give it about eight to 12 weeks for it to actually work before you can say that it wasn't helpful. And there are some things we need to monitor when taking T3. We want to get a baseline, of course. We want to get a free T3 level. We want to get a free T4 level and a TSH, which is a thyroid stimulating hormone. We want to recheck that at three months. Then we want to recheck every six to 12 months after that. And when interpreting these labs, we want to keep the TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone, pretty low. We want to keep it at the lower limit of normal at 0.4 milliunits per milliliter. Of course, as long as no severe symptoms of hyperthyroidism are present, like sweating, anxiety, anxiety, chest pain, and feeling your heart beating really fast. And since we're measuring the free T3, we want to keep that at the upper range of normal. The good news is the side effects with T3 are actually not expected. We don't expect any side effects when we're using the low doses that we use for psychiatric reasons to improve your mood. But of course, everybody's body is different. So here are some symptoms to look out for that would mean you have hyperthyroidism. Some of them we discussed already. Headache, irritability, anxiety sweating, arrhythmia, you might get some palpitations, feel your heart beating really strong or really fast, diarrhea, or menstrual irregularities. Meaning if you get your menstrual period every month, you might not get it for a few months. And some rare but dangerous side effects, chest pain, congestive heart failure, or shock. And there is a concern about osteoporosis, which is where your bones turn into Swiss cheese. They get very weak with long-term treatment of thyroid hormone, hormone. But this is here's the important thing. Studies actually haven't found that leothyronine at the doses used for psychiatric reasons causes this. So it's theoretical at this point. So T3 has very little to no side effects. It can boost your energy. That's one of its positive ones too. And it's pretty cheap. You can get it for $16 to $20 a month. If you enjoyed this video, check out this video on screen to learn all about lithium as an augmentation strategy to help improve your mood. I'll see you there.